Welcome back to the Coding Fanatic YouTube channel. I'm your host, Richard, and here at Coding Fanatic, I'm all about helping new Android developers grow quickly. Whether you are working on your projects, learning new skills, or learning the best ways to work with others, these are the pillars that I focus on to grow as a developer, and I'm taking my lessons and passing them on to you. If that sounds like content that you are interested in, hit subscribe, turn on notifications, and you'll be the first to know when I upload new content like this each week. Also join the Coding Fanatic mailing list on codingfanatic.com and you'll get uh, the special weekly emails that I send out regarding uh, just ways to stay motivated and keep moving forward. Learning with Kotlin is a series about learning Kotlin for Android development. I learn and as I go along I document my process and my progress and let you guys see just how to go about learning a new language for Android development. Last time, I told you guys about my solution to the Keep Hydrated Coding Kata on the Code Wars website. This week, I went to submit my solution. Now, we already built the entire thing in a, in a terminal program. So, you know, it, I always like to go a little bit above and beyond. But this time, I went to actually go and submit it online. Now, when I went to the Code Wars website, I noticed something about the function header, and I wanted to share that with you guys today. Okay, so as you can see here, here we are in the Code Wars website, and if we look at the Keep Hydrated Coding Kata, you'll see the solution area right here. This is the blank solution that they give you, or the blank field they give you. You're supposed to actually put your code here. As you can see, the function leaders accepts a parameter of type double, but here I noticed that they have the keyword int. So this means, and and I see uh, the second line, a return statement at return zero. So the first thing this tells me is that this function returns some value. It's meant to return something. That's number one. Number two, the return statement returns zero. So this this these two things tell me that it returns an integer value. Now, I haven't worked with functions as of yet. I haven't come across it, but while doing the solution this is when i saw this i immediately knew okay this is the way that you set up functions to return values in kotlin so you have your function header here's the function keyword the name of the function and then right here is the parameter the the type for the parameter which is type double and then right here you have the colon and then the return type so i'm gonna exit out of this and show you guys a few notes that i took on this now, after noticing this thing with the function headers, I wanted to see a side-by-side -side comparison with Java because I already have experience with method head setting up method headers in Java. So I wanted to look at them side-by-side -side and make some comparisons. So what you see here, this is a screenshot I took from uh, my final, my, my submission. You see that we have a function, get water. It a, takes a parameter time of type double and I changed it to say, okay, this will return a double. And what we do here is take the time, multiply it by 0.5. You can see here that they use the return keyword to return this value the same way as you would in Java. It's exactly the same, it's no different. And if you analyze the function as a whole, you see the return type here of type double and the return statement which is used to return it. Take time, multiply it by 0.5, and that's the double that you return. And if you look at our Java version of uh, the solution, we have public static int get water. So the method here is called get water. Uh, this one returns an integer, but you know it's the same concept. It accepts a parameter time of type double. So you see here, it's the it's no different. Also, it's the Kotlin version also accepts a double. And we have the return keyword here, and we say we take time, multiply it by 0.5 and we are casting this to a type of integer. Pretty much the same as I've used the two int method in Kotlin to take a decimal and truncate the, or take a double and truncate the decimal and just make it uh, a whole number. It's, this achieves a similar, uh, this, the, a similar result. So we're, type, we're casting it to type integer and then we're returning the time times 0.5. And uh, you know, again, the same return statement that's using Kotlin or return keyword and we have the type that the method is supposed to return 
methods and functions. We have the type that's supposed to return, and we have the return keyword right here. So you know, it's it's uh, there. There's a, there's there's parity between these two things. Doing this coding kata again in Java really helped me to better understand the syntax and some of the nuance with Kotlin. If you even if you I even noticed a little pattern with the way that code with the way that things return values. Where if you look at a Kotlin program, typically there's either a function or a variable followed by a colon and then the return type or data, the data type. So like you can have a variable colon uh, you know, double to signify that this is a double variable. You have a function, you have the whole function header, you have the keyword, name of it, all that stuff, the parameters, and then colon and then the data type that's supposed to return. So it's like a little pattern that I've noticed. You know, I'm sure there's probably more to it than that, and I'll figure that out as I go along. But you know, either way, this was a, a, a pretty interesting exercise. Uh, and and with that being said, I, I I've said it before, but I really want to emphasize using coding challenges to help you learn a language. I mean, it, it's it's underrated, honestly. You can get a lot of value out of these these exercises. This this one that I did wasn't even like one of the hardest ones. It was a very simple exercise where you you're pretty much just doing arithmetic, and that's it, and formatting output. But even something as simple as that can teach you so much if you're new to the language and trying to pick things up. So I really suggest that you guys who are, if you're new to Kotlin, or then you know go to code wars or some any website that does code challenges go to code wars you know link up your github and all that stuff and start doing challenges today don't don't wait another minute longer it doesn't matter where you're at even if you are new to software development or you don't know much about coding give it a shot go on the website make an account or whatever and start doing challenges pick an easy one this is this this challenge that i chose was one of the easiest ones there that's why I chose it. I wanted something simple that I could work through that would give me some experience so I can get a little bit under my belt and look at all that we've learned. In the last few weeks, I've covered a lot, just from a, a lot of things in Kotlin from this one single coding challenge, you know? So, you know, that's just something to think about. With that being said, thank you all again for tuning in to the Coding Fanatic YouTube channel. I'm your host, Richard. Again, if you like content like this, you know, like, comment, subscribe, follow me on social media in the links below, and uh, join the mailing list on codingfanatic.com. Uh, sometimes it gets kind of rough to keep up with your practice, your programming, and, and your trading, training, and things like that. But you know, I, I put out some words of wisdom each week in my mailing list to help you stay motivated. You know, so yeah, definitely go ahead and join that. Uh, with all that being said, again, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, if you uh, didn't like the video then leave me a comment let me know what i can do to improve if you did like it you know thank you again so much for watching uh with all that being said i will uh, see you guys in the next one peace